Okay, this video is introducing the idea of taking shank probe measurements on a sheet metal part. And the unique part about that is that you need to be able to use the uh, shank along the edge of a sharp edge where you really can't take a measurement with the ball tip uh, of a regular shank pr or regular probe. So the key to doing that is to go ahead and use a T-probe with the 960 and a calibrated shank tip. And that's really an essential is to calibrate the shank in addition to the probe tip uh, so that you can take plane measurements as well as hole measurements. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what we can do. So in order to do a measurement with this shank probe, what I'm going to do is measure these holes and use a special measurement profile called a discrete shank point measurement. And if I open up the properties of that measurement profile, you can take a look at a couple of important settings. The first is the number of points. You can constrain the measurement process to a certain number of points, or you can just enter zero to make it uh, measure as many points as you want in a series. And the other thing is that you need to be able to measure a plane, and the plane is used for the tip compensation. So we know where the shank is, but we don't know the depth of the hole, and this provides us that information. So if you want to define that, you can do it from SA, or you can bring up this little dialog. And what I'm going to do is use three point measurements uh, to define a plane in process. And so I'm going to measure that plane and then measure my hole in one go. So um, I have a little part here set up. I'm not actually aligned, but I'll give you an idea of how this works. So to begin with, um, all I need to do is press button A to start the measurement process. and um, Actually, what you really want to do is you want to set the probe tip down on the part in order to uh, take the first plane measurement. And so I'm just going to stop the process and restart it again. Okay, and there I have a first point, and I'm going to take another point and a third point, which is defining my plane. So now I have a plane uh, measured, and it's now ready to take compensated uh, tip points or shank points. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start the trapping process for the uh, circles in my, in my part by simply pressing button C to progress trapping. And now I can just go ahead and start measuring. So each of my measurements is compensated by the plane and is being trapped into my circle. All right. Uh, again, I can just push button C to move on to the next hole in the, in the list and take an additional set of measurements. I'm just going to do three or four points here and go on to the next one. And this is really pretty easy because you just lean the tip up against the edge of the hole and then take the measurements and take the points as you go. So again, I'm going on to the last hole here. And what's kind of nice is I haven't actually even interacted with the tree at all because I have the, um, the buttons here in the T-probe. makes it fairly convenient. All right, I think I got that straight now. So um, take a couple more points here. Okay, and you can push A to end the, end the measurement process. So let me zoom in and see what we got. So we have, we have our three holes and we have our plane returned, which is kind of nice. So um, let's just take a little bit of a closer look at the actual points that were measured as part of this process. Um, and that's really the secret, is that you're using the plane to define the depth of the hole and that's what's allowing us to use the shank without any, anything on it. So the plane is measured regular. You see that the uh, compensation is uh, both planar and radial and they're equal, symmetric like you'd expect. But what's unique about this measurement profile is it will compensate the offsets so that your plane offset is zero and the radial is a unique number that is defined by the depth of the, or de defined by the angle of the probe as it pierces through the plane. So that gives you a very precise radial offset that can be used for defining the circle uh, with the maximum uh, accuracy. So that's a pretty cool little uh, trick we have going on there. So I have, that's basically the idea, right? You've def measured a plane and you've measured a couple of circles and I'm just gonna go ahead and align to the nominal. And we got this nominal geometry relationship alignment. Uh, what we can do is just select the relationships and perform a best fit with the circle center points, which is a real quick way to align. We'll go ahead and do that. And yeah, it asked me what to move. I'm gonna move my instrument. 
select the instrument and voila we're aligned so that was the idea uh, you just measured some circles and use them as a best fit to align to your part so that's another little fun little trick that you might find interesting so there was one other feature on this part that I wanted to show you which is the idea that you could also measure a, a, uh, a beast line uh, or an edge uh, with uh, with uh, a neat little proximity trigger. So what I've done is lay out some points along the spline and I've also uh, created some vectors to use as triggers. And the way that this works is that you can select those vectors and drag the shank probe along the edge and the vector itself triggers the measurement. So let me just show you how that works. If I bring up the uh, proximity triggers here using vectors and select my vectors and I guess I'll just go with the defaults basically this is the triggering proximity so how close you're going to be um, you can then go ahead and just simply take the t-probe and move it along and um, slide it along the edge of the part and when the shank crosses the vector uh, a point will be recorded so really that's all there is to it it's really that easy you just slide along and trigger points so there are a couple other little details that you probably would need to be aware of just uh, to give you an idea of uh, things to, to, to look for. Um, and the first one is that there's this measure each point only once. And that's um, actually kind of an important thing. So you'll be measuring each point only once unless you uncheck that box. And when you uncheck it, then you'll continue to measure as many times as you cross the vector and you can precisely you know, can you can double check that you've got the most precise point you can have to the location of the vector. Otherwise, you'll want a fairly small or tight tolerance. The other thing you want to look at is the proximity. The auto proximity scan has a little checkbox here to use the shank, and if that's not checked, then that will um, not work because you will be looking to use the tip of the probe, which is far below the vector. So those are two little details that I thought might be uh, worth sharing and. Um, that's a couple of tricks on how to measure a sheet metal part with a T-probe and a calibrated shank.